we're off. Good morning, uh, audit committee agenda first. Uh, first up, we'll have Mr. Buffum with a 2021-22 audit report for purchasing. Uh, as a reminder, we do every year, we're required to do internal audit. We have a district-wide risk assessment. Uh, from that risk assessment, we bring it to the audit committee, review as a district, choose a cycle area or a focus area, I should say. Uh, for 21-22, we chose purchasing as the focus area. Uh, so Jim's completed his work on that. Uh, is going to present the audit report and uh, findings and such. Okay. Great. Thanks, Dave. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining me this morning. Uh, as, as Dave mentioned, I'm here to talk about the purchasing audit report that we uh, completed we were out there a couple months ago. Uh, on this. Uh, so, I'll briefly walk you through this. Uh, feel free to stop me if you have any questions along the way. Um, page two is just kind of a standard uh, audit uh, report in the language. Uh, page three, we get into just giving a little bit of background about the purchasing area, some of the uh, relevant board policies that were um, reviewed and um, you know, part of the overall uh, audit. Um, page four, we kind of have the, the substance of the report broken out into a couple of different areas. Um, so first we talk about purchase orders, requisitions, purchasing agent, uh, those bullet points at the top kind of outline for you the different procedures that we did in terms of uh, reviewing how uh, purchase orders are initiated and approved, um, uh, extent of when the bidding process- Can, can I just stop for one second? This what I have is like every other page. Oh, it didn't get the backs of. Well, same. Yes. Just the even numbers. Yes. <laughs> you got the odd numbers. Yeah. The odd yeah. Numbers. Okay. Seven pages total. There are. Yeah, I think the back. I think the back. Seven pages like, total. I don't know. Oh, that's right. They're all. They're all. In the second part, too. Good audit of the presentation, John. Good catch. <laughs> when, when it said page two, and I page two, like, okay, they could have missed a page, no big deal. Right. But then yeah. when I started looking at it, I said, oops. I know you get an audit report with a blank page. It's really yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> Redacted. Okay. It's like the uh, Trump subpoena there. Yeah. <clears throat> I've got nothing on mine but highlighting if you want to keep on. I mean, I'm in no rush. Just okay. Just Only be a second. It's very yeah, short. Yeah, it's going to take a bit long. Three pages right on the agenda. Yeah, it's not much. Three pages. Not much to it. Uh, we have your audit report and the internal audit RFP yeah. discussion. Yeah. Not not much on the agenda. No. You guys gotten in on some of this rain the last couple of days? Yeah, overnight. Uh, been a hit or miss on their forecast though, because I look at it the night before, and then it's been very different each morning when I look at. Yeah, we finally have gotten in Rochester. We've needed it, boy. We've had oh, yeah. it for almost since the 4th of July, really. But uh, it was raining good when I left this morning. We got quite a bit yesterday, too. You know, we got nailed yesterday pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to come back this afternoon, too. I'm not yeah. mistaken, yeah. Not good for, for, for me, maybe for you because you're under undercover. Well, no, we <laughs> we don't have the club tonight because um we're at the polling location. So oh we canceled okay. our league. Ah. So we well, we didn't cancel, we adjourned for a week. Gotcha. League of Pachi. Pachi. Start this afternoon. I want to start a little early. <laughs> front or back? Front. Just second half of the year, we're all in the front now. So oh. It was a Tim Reese rule, even though it was worth tape cuts. Again, we quiet here. <laughs> yeah. 
maybe an intertwined idea. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Kids around the lake all summer. They sunny balls. Yeah. You're definitely a great golf person. It's a long way. No, I know you know. I'm just saying. Okay, okay I guess uh, we're ready to rock so and roll, we're Jim. Top stage four then. Okay. Um, and so uh, in the first section of the report here, uh, those are the bullet points uh, outlining the procedures that we did. Initiating, approving, uh, purchase orders. Um, Looking at a sample of uh, purchase orders uh, to confirm with being properly approved, whether or not the bidding process is utilized, uh, when, when that may be appropriate, um, adding new vendors, et cetera. So um, good results in this area. Uh, only one, one item here uh, as it related to the review of new vendors. Um, there was one that uh, did not appear to have the Supporting documentation that's part of the district's process in place when uh, when we reviewed those, um, and, and as you can see uh, from Dave's response, uh, Dave, I don't know if you want to talk about this one at all, just to give them a little bit of background. Sure, and this was a finding some audits back in terms of a district wide. Uh, so we we're happy on the, the stand on the side of district wide. We got that as our process as W nine is part of any vendor we put in the system. We've never really done that with these smaller extra class, uh, we should. Uh, w is needed for if we have to issue a 1099, say it's a DJ for a dance and it's over the threshold and so forth. So um, we'd like to put that in practice. We'd like to roll that out, you know, kind of soft require it this year and roll it out in 23, 24, a couple of reasons for that. One, it is going to slow up some of the purchases which are usually needed pretty fast in extra classroom for various events. Uh, two, we currently have no central treasurer. Hopefully uh, central treasurer, you know, is part of the treasurer duties here at the district. Uh, you know, when we get that in place, you know, the, put that in place as part of the extra class processes. Uh, but it will be kind of just a adjustment that will has the potential to slow some things down. We you just mentioned a threshold. What's the threshold? Last I remember it was six hundred dollars. Yeah. I still I think it yeah, still is issue at ten ninety nine. Mm -hmm. uh, for for services, I believe, not for products, yeah, of course. Right. So like DJ services or like photographers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, so top of page five, we're still in the same section of the report, but we, we've got one item here that we just present as a comment rather than a finding. Um, and that relates to how uh, the use of manual requisitions um, is still uh, utilized throughout the district in various areas, uh, departments uh, and or school buildings. Um, that is less efficient than the normal pro process, the, the electronic process that's in place through the WinCap system. Um, you know, the, the WinCap system has the ability to for people to create uh, a, a requisition within the system electronically and advance that to the next person uh, through electronic approvals. And it's got the ability also to uh, make attachments such as quotes or other supporting documentation. Um, but I think for a variety of different reasons, there are a number of uh, people and, and buildings that are still, uh, I guess, familiar with or prefer the, the paper process. And so, we, we raise that um, only as a something to consider, trying to push people towards the electronic process, which is much more efficient, takes any of uh, you know, uh, the paper process, somebody signs it, and then it gets moved you know, through the mail, um, intramural mail. But you know, whereas the electronic approval, once once you approve it, it's instantaneous, you know, to move on to the next person. So um, the paper process is just more time consuming, uh, it's less efficient, and the purchasing clerk, you know, has acknowledged that those tend to be, tend to take longer to fulfill and, and complete. Um, so we didn't present it as a finding because the, the paper requisitions, it's still, you know, you've still got the documentation of who's initiating it, who's approving it. Uh, it's more of an efficiency and, and uh, efficiency issue than anything else. And that's why we presented that as a comment uh, to consider. Um, and then just a couple of other results in here in terms of 
you know, what we found. You know, all the purchase orders were were approved by the purchasing agent. And um, in terms of our work in looking at some of the vendors that are high dollar vendors, where uh, bids uh, or either cooperative bids or district bids might um, might be suggested based on the spending levels. Um, whether state contracts were being utilized to get favorable uh, rates and, and uh, preferred pricing. Uh, we, we looked at uh, all those vendors and, and really it appears that the district has a good process in place to utilize um, state contract bids, cooperative bids through BOCES and um, through RFP process for professional services and other uh, similar vendors. So that, that those results were, were very good. Getting back to that the software piece, do we have the software in place here? At the, yeah, it's, it's just a matter of comfort level in terms of comfort training. level training support. Uh, we got a meeting with the Rick this week. We we've, we've got a few pockets that are already doing the electronics straight and works well, and then you kind of got some of the other pockets where maybe there was turnover at clerical or they just haven't kind of not early adopting type and they do more paper. Right. Um, my thoughts on it are to try to have a little more support. That's going to be the meeting with the Rick. Because what you'll get inundated with is just a lot of wind cap questions. How do you get from A to B? How do you just supporting them so they can do it, you know, uh, well? Right. And you'll run into uh, is the whose job is the input? You can run into a little of that, but that's that's the way we'd like to attack it. Is yes, we've got the software. Yes, they can input. The other good thing is since kind of COVID came to be, we're doing a little more electronic. Like our communications with the claims auditor are are strictly electronic for the most part. So people are getting more comfortable just getting that stuff in there. Uh, WinCap's made some changes where you can put the attachments now directly on. Um, that's helpful. Like if they submit a PO requisition and like, uh, for example, our building and grounds will scan it in, attach it right to the PO rec, it's all there electronically. And the other way certainly is, you know, there are inefficiencies there. Fill out a piece of paper, doing the work to fill it out. Got another piece of paper with the quote, putting that in. Now somebody has to key it in and potentially scan in the backup. I went kind of through a similar experience to the DA's office. I mean, we went from paper to paperless, mm. and um, there's a lot of kicking and screaming that happened. But once everybody became familiar with the system, I mean, everybody loves it now. Mm -hmm. So it's yep. really worth the time and effort. Mm -hmm. So I would agree with that. I'm sorry to kind of digress there a little that bit. That was a union issue too for a little while. They had received money to push a buzzer to open a door, so they felt they should we get more money for keying in a requisition instead of writing. Back when I was writing, so it's been going on for. 15 years or more trying to get people. It's more money to type than, than write. Is that what they're I'm with you. I thought it was much easier. Um, <laughs> they've done a phenomenal job. I don't know if you've talked about that new software of the new company there. That's, uh, that's sure. That's a fantastic. Uh, at Data Services, and our hope is to use it, quote, soft rollout this year and then fully implement next year. So they're going to work with us. And what, what the basic idea is in public procurement in, in general is generally about 10 times more just complicated, whether beneficially or so or not, than you'd expect it to be, just with the things you have to jump through to make a purchase. Um, so what we'll have is like, let's say uh, they're all buying X product and the schools are putting in individual purchase orders. Uh, if we're over a threshold, you know, we should be getting quotes on that. You may not realize that the first purchase rec you receive, right? You receive $400 of X, and then we carry forward with that purchase. And then we receive a PO request for another $400 of X. Well, now we're over the threshold. Why didn't we know we were gonna be so on and so forth? Ed Data Services does a service and they have a lot of clients kind of on the outside of the state, particularly in the Southern piece. And what they do is they bid a lot of these products and they've been doing it for a while. Uh, the schools in the group will say, you know, we use uh, these, they'll bid out those. And the other nice thing is it direct interfaces with WinCap. So when somebody goes to Ed Data Services, uh, let's uh, say teacher, for example, they're looking at the products. Anything they pick out of that has already been bid, uh, has already generally been able to show savings over other areas, which of course you can use state contract, you could use um, you know, piggyback of the contract, so on and so forth. And the idea is again, efficiency, they pick the product out of there and it goes direct into the requisition process. Nice. Everything's, we're not printing something out, pre-keying, we're not writing, you know, but it is again, a support training, type uh, yeah. issue. So very, we're very excited to get a look at it and get that moving. Yeah. moving. No, I think once they see the benefits and the, the work that it saves them, 
um, they're going to be all over it. So I think that's just really where you got to you know, uh, focus like, your efforts. That's, that's the biggest thing is the quotes, right? Whether you write them or you don't write them, get them over here. We try to tell people, you know, back, I'm old, right? So back when you had to call Rome Office Supply and all those places and write stuff down, you just put in a number now and you got Google, you know, mm -hmm. so it can be done so much faster. Yeah. So these additional grants Ian's just been getting. I mean, this, this is literal. Uh, yeah. You know, and then when I'll quote, you know, you're in Ohio and then yeah. everybody wants everything first. And they've really been handling it rather well over there. But we'll receive everything from a PO request that's just well, you know, nicely well done with specific of the thing and the quotes needed to meet policy. And they've looked, and then sometimes we'll receive one that just says um, desk desk or refrigerator, $900, <laughs> nothing attached, no vendor, no specs. And what that causes, of course, is yep. a rework. Okay. Well, exciting stuff. I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, okay. Um, bottom of page five, uh, the next section of the report um, talks about approval levels. Um, so within the WinCap system, there are various levels of approvals. Um, and so we got the, the printout of that list to see who are the personnel that are in the system with some level of approval. Uh, we evaluated that, identified who those people are in terms of the positions. Um, and uh, the only one finding that we had in this area was uh, there was still an approval or someone who was listed in there um, who had retired from the district and just needed to be updated and removed from the system. Um, some of the other uh, results that we found in this area, we, we outline on page six as well. Um, so this is kind of the, the different things uh, that we did and, and what those results were. Um, generally, uh, support staff are the ones that would initiate a purchasing requisition. Uh, generally, it's administrators that are approving those. Um, final approval is the purchasing agent. We've also got um, Ian as the purchasing clerk over there uh, and working there now, who has a similar role um, at BOCES where he splits his time. And so he's got a tremendous amount of, I think, experience and kind of knowledge for, uh, for working uh, in that role. Uh, so that seems to, to be working out pretty well. Um, and then the last section of the report on page seven, um, so in terms of uh, purchasing guidelines, so when competitive bids are not required, um, we were asked just kind of in terms of the district's policy and, and the different thresholds that it has for when verbal quotes are required versus written quotes versus uh, a formal bid process um, and the levels that the district has set. How, do, how does this district compare with other comparable districts? Um, and, and so what we, we, what we have outlined here is, just, you can see um, three verbal quotes the district requires for anything over $500 up to 2000 written quotes um, 2,000 to 20 and then a bid over 20,000. And so for comparative purposes, we just outlined below in those different bullet areas um, you know, what we, you know, and, and this varies you know, from one district to another, but in general, um, purchases under $1,500, um, a lot of districts will not require um, quotes above 1,500 um, uh, up to a range of, uh, 3,500 to 5,000 would require the verbal quotes and then verbal uh, or written quotes, I'm sorry, uh, about that up to the $20,000 uh, limit. So I think you know, the, the, the interest in this was to just kind of see, you know, how does the district compare? Are we doing you know, too much work or too, uh, too, too much time consuming work in terms of documenting quotes for things starting at you know, $500 um, as opposed to, to you know, kind of what's the norm uh, in, in other comparable districts. And uh, so th those are just kind of some results that we shared for the di district's consideration in terms of, um, you know, its current levels. 
That requires a board resolution, right? Oh yeah, yeah, that would be a change of policy. Policy, yeah. yeah. Is yeah. something you, you'd would recommend and forward? I, I would. Um, what we run into a lot is you run into a five, six, seven hundred dollar purchase, and you know the the hope is that the administrator in charge of that budget area knows their kind of stuff mm -hmm. and is making good decisions with what they purchase there. The time involved to necessarily either get them to get three quotes or get us getting the three quotes, mm -hmm. which we always tell them uh, is purchasing. We will get the necessary items to meet policy. Uh, we prefer if you do one, you know your area is better. I know what's needed in a business office. The other X need, knows what's needed for their uh, section or purpose. If they get the quotes, generally they may, you know, find get more involved in what their market is, um, and we're able to process it faster. Of course, it also allows a little more time spent on higher purchases. Mm -hmm. So even if they meet policy, you know, we have reason to look further into it. We will and we do. And the other one is even if policy calls for no quotes needed under X dollars, that doesn't mean that uh, Ian, who does a really good job, doesn't have other avenues to get the thing and will suggest it, and he does. Mm -hmm. So even when quotes aren't needed for, say, a $400 item, if we know we can get it through X and we can get it cheaper and people have been happy with the product, we're going to suggest that. Yeah. But if we get a purchase rec that's for $575, even if we know or we believe that this is reasonable, that we've been happy with the vendor, um, we still have to go through that work for that purchase mm -hmm. to meet policy, whether or not it's beneficial and it takes time away from other ones where we might get more bang for the buck. Okay, so that's something you'd probably put through Peter and- Yeah, if uh, policy through committee. policy committee. Okay. We're bumping the 500 to 1,000, we already talked about that. Yeah, now it's been discussed, is that still, okay. Good. That was just he said he's waiting for the new board to come on. Okay. I think I remember that. House. Is there a certain department, Dave? I would imagine facilities is probably the one that holds everybody causes more cold issues or anything else or like. Yeah, they've got and they've got uh, one of the tougher areas with like repairs and stuff that certainly becomes a you get an eleven, twelve hundred dollar repair, and often the item is, you know. Uh, do you bring it to somebody else for a quote for a repair? Yeah. How do you do that? And, Maybe look at something about yes, uh, the facilities, a separate kind of thing. You know, yeah. That's a kind of policy just for that. And then when you do your risk area, make, let them audit that risk area mm -hmm. for purchasing the facilities, make sure they're still doing what they need sure. to do. Mm -hmm. That is a big one, especially right now, I know, with, with stuff. You just can't get stuff. But I'm yeah. concerned that we're not going to open buildings someday. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. to control heat and that kind right, of thing. Right. It's just crazy right now. Yeah. I mean, that isn't even with purchasing, but I mean, that holds it up a little bit more. You got one thing the other day for a storage unit at an elementary building on the, on the invoice will be delivered in 72 weeks. <laughs> yeah. 72 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, there's a lot of that right now. Probably not a building in the South. Okay, so uh, yeah, so that's the end of uh, this report. Any any other questions? Anything I can no. answer for no. you? Well, very good. Thank you. Okay. We were going to put this on there. Is nothing really to? Okay. Yeah. No, I think the uh, results for this were, were very positive. Good. We we're going to put it on the September board meeting uh, for acceptance. Board has accepted the audit. And I just okay. wanted to thank Jim and EFPR. Uh, nothing changes. We won't see him for at least a few years. And just thank you. <laughs> Appreciate uh, working with you and your service with the district. Thanks, Dave. Very much so uh, for me as well. Really enjoyed working with you and all your staff in the business office. We appreciate the opportunity to, to work with the district. And it's just kind of one of those crazy times right now where we're kind of, um, uh, because of staffing issues and concerns, yeah. like so many people are having, um, we're, we're having to make some difficult choices about renewing contracts yeah. and mm -hmm. how to uh, kind of direct uh, the, the staff that we've got and with engagements like this uh, really particularly the travel and just kind of some of the time commitments that 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 requires uh, with some of our further uh, further away lo uh, locations we're going to take a pause and then kind of reevaluate you know maybe in a, in a year or two where where things are We'll see. So okay. please keep us in mind. Um, I, I wish you the best in, in filling that next internal auditor and, and certainly 
we'd be interested in you know submitting a proposal again in the future if, uh, if our circumstances allow it. Good. Well, thanks, Jim. Yeah, okay. thanks, everyone. You've always presented yourself well the few years that I've been here. So appreciate that. We enjoyed working with everyone here. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Stay dry. Okay, take care. <laughs> So yeah, you want to bring me up to speed on that? So they used to do the internal audit. They've they... been doing it for about three years, and that's our next uh, agenda item is right. the internal audit. So is that is that why uh, is there something going on in their company that's is allowing them to do it now? I think it's kind of as you said, so. staffing, and I think they're uh -huh. they're restricting their area that they're covering. Okay, yeah, they're from Rochester, right? Yeah, yeah. there's other places from Rochester too. Yep. It was more the data the CPA to stay away from data, but. <laughs> uh, so we've had how long's the RFP been out? This is our second iteration. Uh, just to give you dial you back to the beginning of it, uh, we did a internal audit RFP. We got um, three three responses on the first one, and there was only one that met the technical tri criteria, and that was eight times the cost. So we decided we'll go out for RFP again. We went out for RFP the second time. Uh, we got this second, we got one response. Uh, this response was also in the first group that had a technical issue, had a technical issue in this uh, response as well. Um, the district does have in their RFPs, it is allowed to discount the technical issue. What is the test? What is the type? On the first one, they were missing a bid certification, which is them certifying their, their submittal. And the second one, they were missing the pricing sheet. Uh, which was included in the first one. I've printed out some copies. Uh, I did reach out to them too to discuss it. Oh, sorry. Our thoughts are to reach out to them as we have, but to continue the discussion with them. And, and if they're willing to honor the fee proposal in the first RFP uh, to look to award to them. They're also from Rochester. Um, I can tell you that one of the partners, Mr. Zuber, uh, very active in presentations on New York ASBO, God bless with internal controls and that kind of um, work. So they're certainly a well-qualified uh, firm. Um, they certainly do a lot of school district work. Am I reading this right? It's $6,500 bucks an hour, is that they said? Additional testing risk area will be built at our rates, not to, not exceed, to exceed the total. Out. All right, so that's the total, the total. not 60. Yep. 500 an hour. No, no, no. I was going to say, I got to get out of this business. <laughs> <We're not here. laughs> uh, so, as for three years, uh, it is um, the risk assessment, of course, they'll do every year uh, and risk assessment update. This will include one area of testing, as all our others have uh, per the RFP. In the RFP, we have the internal auditor do the extra classroom training. Um, one area where we've had internal audit due before, and I would like to discuss with them uh, as we move forward is, is possibly payroll testing. What that is, is once every uh, few years, uh, the audit will recommend, uh, generally it come from the external auditor or the internal auditor, that you do a payroll testing that is uh, at the actual buildings, handing out uh, the checks and verifying IDs. It's essentially a audit test for making sure the people exist. Um, it is cumbersome, it is labor intensive, it is upsetting to people's direct deposits. Uh, if you make them get the check, often we've been able to have the auditors just do the direct deposit and still verify the ID and have them sign. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to look at that and, and look to talk to them about having that included in the service. So our, our hope or our um, recommendation is to reach out to them, discuss, make sure they'll honor the original RFP price and look to award to them. How uh, how does this compare to, to what we were paying? Uh, we were paying approximately 10 a year. Uh, I believe the contract was about 30 for the period. So it, oh, just almost, under double. Almost double, mm -hmm. yeah. The permanent was eight times the price. That was the one from New York City? Yes. Do you see any point in extending the RFP or? There's not much downside to it. We could do another RFP. We 
beat the streets reasonably well with this one. Uh, we mm -hmm. tried to basically, you know, an RFP for internal audit. We kind of asked mm -hmm. uh, other auditors, you know, who, uh, and like Questar does internal audit, you know, a uh, sidearm of POSIs, and uh, they ju they're just booked. Uh, we gave mm -hmm. it another shot. We tried to uh, twist their arm, see if there was another uh, area of BOCES that also did the service. Um, but there isn't. There are. I don't know. I mentioned the PMA to say somebody's not here, but you know the clerk position is still out there. I don't know if this is a position where you could intertwine. You know, trying to get. And I'm talking a clerk like a regular clerk, not you know, not doing all the kind of minutes and all those kind of different mm -hmm. things for the committees. But just a thought. Um, I know when I was doing it, we think we didn't we have. Was it illegal for Darkangelo to do it at first when that the claims were? Darkangelo can't do. Out. Yeah, I don't know when they did that. They probably did it when the... <clears throat> Just a thought that and we don't want to hire one. They wouldn't have enough to do full-time, of course. But maybe if you're trying to intertwine a couple other positions, it might be something for personnel to talk about where it could fit in. So, so this isn't... I mean, we could hire our own. It's not like required that they be an independent... I don't think this one does. does organization. It? No, I don't. We've um, read through the nice and stuff, and no, I don't. I don't think that. And there are other districts that do it. I know you. I don't know if Utica still does it, but they did it for years. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Just a thought. Well, I mean, you're looking at seventeen a year, seventy-five. Cheap, cheaper than hiring. Cheaper somebody. than hiring somebody because then you well, got know, benefits I mean, and all that. Maybe make it more attractive to another. No, I understand. Well, but we've been trying how long we've been chasing our tails on the district clerk, right? So yeah. <laughs> this is uh, this is probably the way to go. Uh, I I don't know. I mean, if if, if you think that you've done uh, a more than adequate job trying to find somebody, and this is this is all that you can come up with. I mean, the disadvantages is that they get fucked up too, right? And then all of a sudden mm -hmm. you're, you're, you you lose them as well. I mean, it doesn't feel great to have to pay almost double, but sometimes you're left with no yeah. choice. It's these kind of the economy nowadays, too, yeah. unfortunately. So, and we're on, you know, we can try to negotiate down. Mm -hmm. We can certainly give it a shot. Yeah. I mean, you know, it doesn't hurt. Right? No. I mean, I'm sure that they figured they probably didn't put out their low, their, their, their uh, final and firmest bid. I'm sure that there there's got to be some more wiggle room there somewhere. So you know, maybe we could get it down to one and a half times increase rather than <laughs> one and three quarters times increased. So I don't know. how do you feel about Jeff? Yeah, I, I agree with that. Right. Ideally, you want them in place fairly soon, right? You I should. Mean, it's in one, an ideal world, yes. It's one of the more flexible time restriction mm -hmm. pieces. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're right. We're into 2023, 22, 23. Um, you know, the first piece with them to come in and do, especially fresh with the district, the first risk assessment is going to be really robust. Right. Um, yeah. You'd hate, okay. to, hate to wait too far into the year. And they seem more qualified. I mean, you know, yeah. It's the work that they do, clearly. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. The only thing that I hadn't seen was that, was the, the price of the contract. Yeah, I was like, yeah. where, well, what's the, what, or the the bottom firm, line, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, very good. That is it for audit committee. Um, go right into finance. Okay. Uh, finance external audit update. They're here now as we speak. So this is their week of uh, field work. Uh, as a reminder, we anticipate the audit court being ready for board acceptance in October. What we've tried to do is get it in as far in advance as possible for the board to have time to review it before mm -hmm. acceptance. Um, so we will, you know, we've been pushing for earlier dates. Uh, doesn't mean it's going to be, you know, uh, September is probably uh, awful optimistic, mm -hmm. but we'll give you an update uh, the next meeting in terms of how that looks. To give you just a, a preview of year end, uh, we're anticipating in terms of pure accounting of revenue and expenses to be showing you know, a surplus uh, throughout the industry. And certainly here, one of the discussions is we have a lot of one-time revenues going on. And we're gonna show that as we get closer to final numbers to basically outline you know, 
do we have, are we showing a surplus? Yes, the revenue number is this, the expense number is this. What's making up that revenue number? And a lot of the districts are looking at it in the same sense. You hear the word cliff, which I like in terms of a lot of the ARP money. Uh, we like to call it the cliff, cliff grants because it is tough. They're creating a, here's a revenue stream, but as you know, 24, 25, that revenue stream goes away. So we'll show that as we get closer to year end um, in terms of reporting. Uh, but just to give you an idea of what that is likely to look like, we're likely to be looking at a revenue over expense surplus. What's making up that revenue? A lot of one-time monies. Um, when we take out the one-time monies, I suspect the final number is going to look like a, a small deficit in terms of operating. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll, you know, we'll look at that in greater detail probably September, and then the October meeting in great detail. We have a plan for the surplus if there is one. Just uh, in terms of where where it's going, yet yeah, we've already used. If you remember, the uh, a lot of the surplus was planned. Uh, we did the cursor uh, plan with that in place. Uh, the mm -hmm. expenses that went to cursor created a surplus, which we put in capital reserve. So a lot of that's uh, spoken for as we get toward again September October. Yes, we've got in our uh, plans essentially in a reserve update. Uh, we're doing that kind of work now to give you an idea, like tax certiorari reserve. Uh, we get from you know, an estimation of liabilities that can create reserve money either going in or coming out if we have the money to do it. Uh, EBLAR, uh, Employee Benefit Accrued Liability Reserve, will run a compensated ba balance as a calculation. Money may need to go in there or out. Um, so we'll we'll be presenting that. Yeah, essentially, that's where we, you know. I'm a saver. So if we can find Amen. a way to put it into a reserve someplace, that would probably yeah. be a good thing. That's mm -hmm. the insurance yeah. money we got from the what, to the board. Uh, yeah. Yep. Staley insurance proceeds. Uh, we've got slightly to go under capital. Yeah. Yeah. In that range. Yeah. Well, I guess that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> could be worse. <laughs> it's it's so, interesting. As long, as long as we've got our, our eyes on the long game, though, too. That's the yeah. important thing. Yeah, it's like putting a reserve is a way to go. Right. So. Okay. Um, Tax warrant, I wasn't really able to determine uh, what that worked out to be in terms of the, the overall uh, tax percentage. Sure. And that should be on the second sheet and a little more clear. It's 2.5. So that matches what we budgeted for. Uh, the tax cap in terms of uh, what we submitted to the state and what we can legally raise the levy to is 3.5. Uh, if you remember through the budget cycle 22-23, uh, we budgeted for 2.5. Um, that's what we prepared it on. Uh, historically, when the opportunity has kind of presented itself, the district has gone even beneath what was budgeted for a uh, tax levy increase uh, with inflation and reoccurring costs. And again, with the one-time revenues being such a large part of the revenue picture, uh, we put out uh, the sheet at 2.5, which again is is a full 1% below tax, the tax cap. Mm -hmm. And what we budgeted for. And matches what we budgeted for. Okay. Yeah, no, that's... I was hoping for something a little less, but you know, I understand obviously with inflation. Okay. Yeah, no, this when you sent it, it was this way. Ah. And I couldn't figure out how to turn it on my computer. <laughs> so I couldn't quite yeah. read it the way that I want. <laughs> just as a reminder, when you see the differences in tax rate uh, amongst the municipalities, that's basically driven by equalization rates, which is the state's estimation of um, how the fair market values are doing. Uh, and also noteworthy on there, uh, which you know uh, is can sometimes fall on deaf ears, but the the true values are going up, you know, faster than the taxes is evident from the tax on true uh, being such a negative reduction, meaning the the values of the homes are going up faster than the tax rate. Understandably, tax increases are tax increases, but just like to calculate that to keep tabs on how that's doing. Hopefully we'll keep going up and we're not in the bubble that everybody thinks that we're <laughs> Seems, uh, am I reading this right? I'm looking at the 21 22 tax rate versus 22 23. Yep. The only one that went up was Rome, and it was only like 32 cents. How does it equate to a Two and a half percent increase. Can I see first? So Rome's up 
I'm looking at right here, right? Yeah, 60, it roams up one, about 110, right? Oh, you're right there. I was looking down here. Okay. Yeah, so this is this is school by itself. By its oh, okay. and then library okay. by okay. itself. Yep. Okay. I looked the wrong chart. Okay. Don't worry. Yes. That would have been nice. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I, was, I don't know how that math worked. It's pretty good, Dave. <laughs> That's why they Okay. That makes more sense. Yep. Okay. So in terms of next meeting, uh, I see a, a agenda meeting on the 13th, Tuesday, Tuesday the 13th. Do we want to do Tuesday at 9 a.m.? I don't anticipate an audit committee being needed for September. Uh, we'll definitely have an audit committee for October. So September, more than likely, we'll just do finance. 13th. Uh, yeah, I could do it in the morning. Nine o'clock? Nine o'clock. Did you want to do like 9 30 if we get the agendas at 10? You can be you want, you want to do it at 9 30? Well, I'm just saying for you. you no, know. nine's better because I, I actually have an afternoon trial. So I but but the, isn't the agenda meeting at 10? Yes. So we would do this. Oh, you want to do this at 9 30? I'm just saying it'd be closer sure. instead of coming here and, and sitting yeah. around for half an hour. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Yes, thank you. I mean it matters, it doesn't matter to me, but oh yeah. Oh, no, no, it's fine. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. 9.30 um, and... Uh, getting a call from Rochester. I wonder if that's Metzger. <laughs> Do I... Um, is there a, something that I need to sign? Or are you going to prepare that warrant? For the warrant? Uh, yeah, all the board. Uh, we have it already ready to roll for... One day. Yeah. The whole board signs. Yeah, the whole board signs. Yeah. It'd be a pass around. around. Okay. Yep. Um, Patty has it. Or, okay. or Sandy. Sandy. <laughs> Sandy has it. Um, a question came up uh, during um, my daughter's soccer parent meeting regarding raffles. Mm -hmm. Is that something that we can talk about now or talk outside sure. the meeting or how you want to do that? Um, either is fine. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, I, I know there's a certain procedure that has to be followed uh, in order to, to, to do it. I, I did look it up a little bit mm -hmm. to find out how you go about doing, getting the authorization. Um, so I don't know that it's not allowed. Uh, it's just a matter of maybe putting some time into to, to get the paperwork in. Is that correct? Or in terms of allowed, meaning uh, legal to do? Yes, legal yeah. to do. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, what we some years back uh, we looked at it in terms of one, a lot of hoops for them to jump through, and we found a lot of you know, it generally isn't. Uh, and two um, issues with minors being involved in raffles or games of chance. I that part you can't is is to the best of my knowledge illegal can't have um minors under 18 in any games of chance or what can be construed as gambling activities all right because i mean it, it seems like a lot of the adults are doing the selling anyway like if it's mm -hmm. like a, i think they had mentioned there was like a, a yeti cooler where they were selling raffle tickets and and i find that a lot of that's being done by parents on social media for the most mm -hmm. part um and I just I hate to take that away from them because it does benefit the kids uh, greatly in terms of what they're using the money for, you know whether it's t-shirts or warm ups or socks or whatever it is. I mean it, it it is usually it's it's money that's benefiting the children for the most part. So if we we kind of tie their hands and, and make it difficult for them to raise that money, then then that means that those socks and warm ups and t-shirts aren't going to the kids, right? So is, is if there's a way that we could make it work. Um, I think I another issue too, though, is there's supposed to be so many documentations generally, right, with all their books. Do we ever get any? Ne never next to real low percentage of submissions. No, I mean, I, I guess I never, probably not a conversation for here, but I guess I just never understood the whole. So why don't why if I wanted to do like say soccer club booster? Why don't I just go out and create a soccer club booster? I don't know why even even where I've been involved with it really. You know what okay. I mean? I mean, they can make a donation to the district, any outside mm -hmm. group. That kind of takes well, away all these approvals. Yeah, no, that's a good point. And I and they had mentioned, well, you know, why are why are we able to sell 50-50 tickets at the at the football games? And I said, well, I'm pretty sure that that's uh, the RFA football booster club, which is separate and apart from the district, right? Are they are they their own their own 503C or something like that? 
That's the, the thing. Indian missions, they, though, don't we? Are, what's that? You say admissions, Joe? Football, we get admissions. Yeah, missions. We get but we're not 50 50. Like the 50 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 tickets yeah. I'm talking about. They sell them at the football games. Yes, yeah. but they don't put in a request. Yeah, that's the whole. They don't put in a request. Same as, same so as, are they same supposed, as hockey. Are they supposed to? Same as hockey. They sell yeah. 50 50 tickets at the hockey game, but they don't put in a. You run into a lot of questions of what, like, so what, what type of organization are they? Because if the mm -hmm. three of us decide we're the boosters for X in the next five minutes, mm -hmm. you know, what are we? You know, yeah. maybe we, we haven't done the 501c3 or, or so forth. We have very little, like, uh, you know, interaction on that basis with them, other than the only one I know in policy is uh, them to submit every July uh, their books to the district or to the board. Um, and again, the response rate is, is very low. Um, I always thought maybe we just do the process over. If you want to be a booster club for the Rogue City School District, you need to, you know, let's do the whole process together. Yeah, I mean, and the stuff and right. Maybe we look at, like I said, I don't know, maybe with the auditors or whatever, what's to stop us right now? If we're just not, not putting Rome on it at all, mm -hmm. Rome City yeah. School District, just, you know, where they. Well, I think. Football boost. It, I think we should probably identify how we we want to do this moving forward, and then if if, if it is going to be, you know, once we once we hit upon a plan to bring in these these parents that are you know at the the faces of these booster clubs and, and and give them a sense of what needs to be done because, you know, I mean, I played in an era where, I mean, I think that there was maybe a a football booster club, but nothing else. And so, you know, we didn't get those warm ups. And it would have been cool as a yeah. as a as a as a player to get those school, though, is just making holding people accountable because mm -hmm. unfortunately people use those as not a legal thing to do. No, I, I, I get it. Like making sure a policy that I think I think the easiest yeah. thing and then again I don't know if I'm right or wrong just start your own thing and say we're welcome out. We're welcome. I don't think anybody's going to worry about it. If it says football booster or selling the Eddie, or if it says Rome football booster, Rome mm -hmm. school. that's just me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Get some legal opinions out. That makes it a lot easier for anybody to really do what they, right. they want to do. Because it seems to me there's not much of a benefit to be tied into the school district to be honest with you. It's just, it's just a lot of red tape, you know? Well, I don't I don't know that they want to be tied to the school district. It's just that they felt like they're being told by the district that it can't mm -hmm. be done. So that part of it, well, we just feel that the only thing is kids involved. If there's any kids involved, mm -hmm. we feel we can get in trouble with mm -hmm. right. Maria selling lottery, which I don't understand why either at that, at that age, but unfortunately it's SEC. Maybe it's something you guys can ask Dan. Yeah. Just but find out. Know, but clubs are selling stuff all the time to go on trips and stuff. Right. And, right. You know, so I don't know. I don't really see the difference, really. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, we'll look into it further. All right. Yeah. If you can. I think we might even have some opinions in the back because we did have an issue a few years back. Okay. Nick went there and we have an issue at some. Yeah. Point. We looked maybe about six, five, six years ago. We've got you know. The, uh, well, I, I, I put it on a radar for the next. Meeting. Yeah. I mean. I, the opinions are fine. I just I want to figure out a way that we can do right. it. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And that's what I mean. You want to make it easy. Opinions are saying no, we can't, and this is why. Well, let's let's figure out the this is why part and, and try to get this yeah. worked out so that we can we can you know that's allow for the kids to, to have this benefit. Okay. Other than that, I have nothing else to do. Yeah, that's it. Good. All well. Great. Hey, thanks everybody. All right. Have a great morning. Um, I'm gonna go take a